Heavenly Father, we love you. So glad to be in the house. So glad to be with my family. So glad to be with those that are connected to Ignited Church through live stream and various forms of media. We're grateful, Father, for what you're doing in the remnant. There are so many great churches around this nation and the world. There are so many great house churches, great leaders that are raising their families up in this hour. I pray, Father, we'll continue to, to confirm one another and to build up the name of Jesus within our areas where we live so that when we lift him up, all men could be drawn unto him. Father, I ask this morning that you would hide me behind the shadow of the cross and help me to articulate this message that you gave to me. I ask that you would take these smooth stones, Father God, and send them as far and wide as possible to reach the nations of the world. Jesus will be mindful to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. And amen. I have a lot of work to do this morning. Uh, I don't know how long this jacket will stay on or the tie or whatever. Uh, but uh, I had to wear it because it was a gift. Amen. I didn't have to wear it, but my, my wife got it for me. She, her middle name is Clarence. It, amen. If any, it, it, all, all women, most men, yeah, uh, country folk, their middle names are Clarence. And uh, so we don't, we never pay full price. I mean, that's what I told her when we got married. I said, you're getting a discount. She said, you better believe it. Is anybody here today? I'm lighting it up because I have a heavy message this morning. I, I've got some things that I'm going to say today that are going to be very pointed and they're going to offend some folks. And I just want to say from the beginning that if I offend you, then I did my job today. Uh, because truth has a way of offending. Truth has a way of offending. The word of God will offend you in many ways, uh, but I don't come out of the gate on purpose to do so. It's just the message that I have been given. And here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, America, you've been cursed with a curse because you choose to believe a lie. You stare at the stars for your answers while your nation drowns in sorrows. You heap up teachers who teach and live doctrines of devils or doctrines of demons and lead you astray. My hour of shaking has come. It is here. Regardless if you choose to look the other way, I will force you to see what I will allow next to come to your nation. My judgments are increasing because your sin overflows. You refuse to repent and relent from your Babylonian ways. Therefore, I will shake you to your core. Listen to this. He said, my shadow will pass through this nation. And oh, what a darkness it shall be. Jeremiah chapter 13 talks about a shadow all throughout the word of God, especially in Job. It talks about the shadow of death. He said, blood will run through your streets for your denial of me. You think these warnings are a joke. Laughter fills my ears. But I tell you, you nation of venom, venom and poisonous speech, your eyes will fill with tears as your enemies draw near. Seek shelter in me, my church and my bride. Prepare yourself for the harvest that surely abides for you. Once I pass over this nation, it will be clear and you will see the whiteness of the final harvest. As I was receiving this message from the Lord, Again, he sometimes gives me titles first, then scripture and what have you. But as I was sitting there meditating, he spoke these words. He said, bewitched, bewitched. And that is the title of the sermon this morning, this message. It's called bewitched. And no, I'm not talking about the cute little witch on television that mesmerized America and allowed witchcraft to come in like soft porn into the hearts and minds of our people in America. It was a subtle cancer that has now infected us to a terminal stage. Is anybody still here? And so this morning I'm going to be very pointed about this message, Bewitched, because that's exactly where our country is. We have been mesmerized. We have a spell that has been cast upon us. We have been enchanted by the powers of the enemy, and we've been captivated to where we don't understand right from wrong, 
and we don't have enough discernment in the house of God. Still can't get very many amens this morning. But I'm going to plow this morning no matter what. Go to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. No, I'm not in Jeremiah. So there are other chapters and books in the Bible. Isn't that right? Just bear with me while I get my desk situated up here for work. Because what I got to say is a lot. And again, I'm not going to come and try to harm anybody in any way with words. Never is my intentions. They just happen to fall that way. I have no intentions of making anybody mad because of your political persuasion or how you feel about certain people and certain things. My job is to preach truth. I'm, I'm not political. I am prophetic. I'm, I'm not interested in your club. I'm interested in the kingdom. I'm not interested in things that deal with uh, futures of people and plans and programs. I'm concerned about what God says and what God has planned for the nation and the world. So the title of this message is called Bewitched. And I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 14, and I'm going to begin in verse 4. Now, on the onset, I said I'm not, I'm not looking to castigate or any of those types of things, but I'm going to lay down truth that is going to be very penetrating. And I know in Isaiah chapter 14, there are some theological differences about who this is speaking of. But I will just tell you that it is dealing with the king of Babylon and it is dealing with a system of government. And so when I begin to preach this to you, understand I am talking about a system, a spirit that is loose upon the earth. And there are certain candidates that fit the title of this and fit the very mold of what Isaiah is speaking of. And I will attempt to make that clear. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 4. And thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? Now, this is future speaking, this is prophecy towards the future. And Isaiah is being led by the Holy Spirit to declare and decree the fall of Babylon, the fall of the king of Babylon. And we know within a shadow of a doubt that in America we are mystery Babylon. This is Babylon. We fit it perfectly to a T. There's no other nation in the world that fits the characteristics and the dynamics than America for Babylon. And so he says, take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say how the, how the oppressor has ceased. Now the word oppressor there in, in the Hebrew, it means this. It means to drive, to extract. It means to be somebody who causes labor. In other words, a taskmaster. He said, how the oppressor has ceased, meaning that one that demands pressure. There's a demanding pressure. It also has to do with taxes. If you look up the word in the Hebrew, you will see it. Negal is the word. And so this oppressor, this king of Babylon, this system of government is an oppressing system. It is one that demands its payment. It is one that demands loyalty through pressure. Is anybody still here? And the name Golden City was a name that was given to Babylon because it was a city of taxation or a city of tribute. 
that you had to, underneath the law of the kings of Babylon, you had to pay unto their government. Y'all fixing ahead with me in a minute. I'm just laying a path for you. And the nations would pay this taxation in order to receive protection from the Babylonian king and his armies. And you would labor and you would work. And if you didn't like it, then you would be overthrown. And so it was a golden city. Now they dealt with coins, obviously dealt with gold, unlike currency of today, a fiat currency. But the revelation and the realization is still the same, that if you were going to do business in the world, you had to do business with Babylon. And so prophetically, Isaiah is saying, how this oppressor and how this golden city has fallen. They have fallen because of their maneuvers to manipulate the world. Their maneuvers as money changers and a money nation. Their maneuvers to extract from people their wealth and their sovereignty. Is it starting to sound a little familiar yet to you? And we are in the same position today in this nation by the way that we deal with foreign entities and foreign countries concerning the dollar, concerning the power of our nation, and concerning our military. We extract upon other nations to follow the way that the Federal Reserve operates and the way that our central banks operate. And if you don't like that, and if you don't follow the rule of the petrodollar, then we will either try to assassinate you and decapitate your administration and your leadership or if that fails then we'll raise up a coup and if that fails we'll just go ahead and find a false flag and invade you now some of y'all don't understand where I'm coming from because there's a lot of people that are just getting on the boat of reality but for thus, uh, those of us who have studied this and have watched our nation go from a righteous nation who defended foreign entities from taking over harmless and friendly countries to a country that invades, to a country that sanctions assassinations, even though we don't have that on paper and we deny it, we still allow surrogates to do it for us called ISIS, come on somebody, and other groups that we have developed over over the years all of this is an American dark history if you care to shine the light on it but most people would rather live upside down on a post hole and deny everything that I'm saying and just sing kumbaya my lord and everything's just wonderful and you know Chevy American pie and baseball when the reality is, is we have a very sick, deep, dark secrets of our country within our government and the governments of the world. The Bible says it. We're just shining light on it today. And it doesn't matter who you favor in the White House or who you favor on the, the, the letter at the end of your registration for voting. It does not matter your political persuasion. This is the culture of the deep state and the dark state of this nation. And we are a group of criminals. Is anybody here with me? I'm just standing right up here without a bulletproof, bulletproof vest or nothing. But it's still the reality of where we live. And I'm building a case for you under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to bring the church of Jesus Christ to the realization you've been bewitched and you don't even know it. And so our country has been engaging in foreign countries around the world in order to keep the petrodollar moving in order to keep the central banks moving and we go to war and we say in the name of God we go to war we send our children to war and our young men to go to war and they shed their blood and we raise the flag and we say you know what a great hero they were and they are but the reality is is we've gone in to foreign countries for the wrong reasons let me read this for you so you can kind of get a better understanding where I'm at. Are you still in verse 4? 
Because we're talking about the oppressor. The Babylonian system is a system of oppression. Now, before you think that I'm going out and saying uh, bad things about the nation and hate America, you've totally missed me already, like most people do that don't like me. But if you'll follow this and read the word of God and see the thread that runs all the way to the book of Revelation chapter 18, you'll begin to see and understand Mystery Babylon and how she works and how she operates. But listen to this. Right now in this world, there are only three countries left without a Rothschild central bank in the world. Rothschild. Most folks don't even know Rothschild. They don't study it. But that entity has been around for over 230 years. And I believe has been responsible for the assassination of John F. Kennedy and so on and so forth. But listen to this. In 2000, now watch. In 2000, there were seven countries without a Rothschild-owned central bank. Are you ready for the names? This is 2000. Write that down. Afghanistan, Iraq, Sudan, Libya, Cuba, North Korea, and Iran. Did you write the names down? Did you make a mental note of those names? Afghanistan, Iraq, Sudan, Libya, Cuba, North Korea, and Iran. In 2003, the only ones that were left were Sudan, Libya, Cuba, North Korea, and Iran. Are you taking good notes yet? We're doing subtraction, by the way, if you're homeschooled like my children are. In 2011, there are only three countries that are left without a Rothschild Central Bank. Are you ready? Cuba, North Korea, and Iran. Who's in the headlines today? Where are we trying to stir up conflict? What negotiations are we trying to undo and all those things and not saying that, that deals were made, were made the right way. My point is, what is in the news? Where are our military? Where are we right now? We're in the place and the position to bring forth central banks into the countries I just mentioned to you. Is anybody still here? Now, I brought that out because we have so many deniers in America that thinks that we cannot be the aggressor. We think that we cannot be the oppressor. We think that we cannot be the ones that are going out and causing troubles on the earth and, and putting ourselves in places we don't belong. But the facts are right before you. And so he said, future speaking, that oppressor is coming to an end. That golden city that is taking in the funds, the taxes, the taxation, the tribute money, the one that is using its military to determine what currency will be used upon the earth. And if you follow this ministry and if you've been alive for longer than a couple days, you would recognize and realize that the American strength and protection of the dollar is going down almost daily. We're watching the petrodollar change and we're watching the kings of the east rise and we're seeing the strength of the brick nations. We're seeing the strength of China. I told you a few weeks ago that when they got together in China on the 19th or was it the 18th, they would get together on their Congress day and I said they would go back to the understandings of Mao. And most people did not even read the headlines or read the stories of what took place when they presented the president of China with the, one of the, 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 the leadership names that was only given to Mao and one other leader. What am I saying? I'm telling you the change of the world is here and the world is tired of the oppression of Babylon. It is tired of that spirit of taxation. It is tired that it cannot have its free markets and its flow without being worried of, of, of assassination or overthrow. You see, it's happening right now. But America lives on a so-called island of make-believe, and we think this is not possible, 
and obviously something must be wrong with my data. But let's look a little further, shall we? Verse 5. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked. Now the word staff there means to stretch forth. It means the ability to stretch out. He said that I'm going to do to the kings of Babylon and that government system, I'm going to break its stretch. I'm going to break its reach. I'm going to take from that system its ability to reach out and to affect the nations as it has been doing. And you are sitting here right now in real time watching this in living color happening to America because of our sin. I'm not making this up. I'm not wishing it to be so. I'm reading you hard data and facts that are not only prophetic, but they're reality of where we are. Our nation, according to the world, has been a bully for too long, and there are other nations gathering together saying, we are not going to allow this to take place. And can I tell you something of the truth? It is the Spirit of God that's allowing this to take place. It is the Spirit of God that's allowing America to go to hell in a handbasket because of our sin, because of our abortion, because of our acceptance of homosexuality and the craziness that's going on in this country. It's a fact, Jack, and you don't like it, but it's a fact. There ain't nothing you and I can do to change it. But we have an obligation to warn those. And I'm so glad when people contact me and say, Pastor, keep preaching the truth because you're waking me up and you're waking my family up. Because I'm going to tell you, I'll keep preaching the truth until the next person wakes up and continues to wake up. So the Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked. The word broken there means to crush and please, before you think that I'm a doom and gloom person and I'm anti-American and all that stupid stuff that people think about you when you preach truth, I love my country, man. I love America. I love my freedom. I love the ability to do what I do. How about you? I love to be able to, to go and, and, and shop and, and, and get stuff on clearance. Try that in some foreign countries. It's one price, dude. If you don't like it, we're going to throw you out. Now, some places you can go barter, you know, if you go to certain, certain parts of the world. But the reality is, you know, we live in a great country as far as the system is concerned, as far as the kingdom of God is concerned and what he's given us. I understand that and I recognize that. But when you do what we do and you're becoming who God said you're becoming as you metamorphosize into this Babylonian world, this Babylonian kingdom, you have to look at the judgment side of what God is going to do to this country and what is already happening. I feel like I'm on a sinking ship that's trying to scream out and yell out to people, get ready, do something. How many of y'all feel the same about it? I was at the outlets the other day. That's where I got my jacket, by the way. I told you my wife's middle name is Clarence. Well, I pay $200 for a jacket when you can get, for, get it for $39. Is anybody here? I don't care if somebody else wore it. I'm just kidding. But I was over at the outlets just walking with my wife and my children, had my little girl by my hand. Next thing you know, here comes this car speeding through the aisles and the sheriff department after him. I had to grab my child, get her out of the way, and tell these two ladies who had their heads somewhere... I mean, they're just ah, carrying their baggage so happy. I said, get out of the road. I don't know how it's going to look on, online, but I don't care. That's what I did, didn't I? Ladies, move. Huh? And then you see the sheriff's car. It looked like Dark Vader. We have Dark Vader cars in Georgia, man. When I see them things, I just, I clam up when I'm driving. I'm like, Okay, my registration, I got my title. Gonna... Because you know the guy that's going to roll out is like 6'7". He's Nephilim. He's like 350 pounds. 
Genesis chapter 6 on a shirt. I mean, big dudes. Don't come to Georgia and mess around. We're going to get you. But I use that illustration because here we were in the sunny day just enjoying our day here in the great land of America when there was a felony arrest about to take place. Two ladies just walking, carrying bags, just any, you know, not even paying attention. And here comes Darth Vader down the road. Lights going on, sirens going on, but they just got a deal. anybody here and that's exactly the mindset of america we're shopping and we're numb and we've been bewitched and we're walking around thinking hey we got our guy in the office we got our gal in congress we got all these different things and we're going to be fine when the reality is that we are mystery babylon and we are sliding into the abyss he said i'm going to he said, oh, he smote the people. Go back to verse 5. And the Lord broke into the staff, watch this, of the wicked. And the scepter of the ruler's scepter, meaning authority. I know this is hard for you to imagine, but there's coming a day when we will not be the head in the nations of the world. We will not be the authority in the nations of the world because we've turned our back on God. And somebody says, well, what about all the other nations that turned their back on God? But we were the one that had the light. We were the one with the responsibility to protect Israel. We were the one with the responsibility to preach the gospel to the nations of the earth. And we have failed our assignment. And besides that, somebody has to be Babylon. Verse 6, who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. And he that raised or ruled the nations in anger. Watch this now. Ruled the nations in anger. He said he smote them with the, who had continuous wrath, continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. In other words, this Babylonian government and this Babylonian system, when it says that it, it was ruling in anger, it talks about the nostrils as if somebody is raging. And that's exactly what we've done with the military industrial complex of our country. By rushing off to various countries of the world and establishing bases and head fronts, if you will, and positions to where we can easily invade or easily be a part of a conflict. And we call other nations and we call other nations to be the boogeyman. And I'm not excluding the reality of a threat, and I'm not excluding the reality of despots and dictators and all the things that we face and have faced. But when we do it for the love of money, when we do it to protect ourselves, when we do it to make America great again, when we do it to cause America to be first and first only, we've made a major mistake. Because we didn't bring God and make God first and make God great America in America. Now watch this. This is future now. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. Who? He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted. Persecution is coming to this country like never before. Persecution is coming not only to the church of Jesus Christ, but it is coming to our nation. Persecuted for the lifestyle, persecuted for the thievery, persecuted for the sin and the abominations that we have committed. But I also believe, as you will see, when I get together with you on New Year's Eve, there's something much greater that is coming, in which I am not able to speak of at this moment. But he says, they're persecuted and no one hindereth. In other words, you're going to dial 911 and nobody in the world is going to pick up for America. Come on, somebody. You're going to cry SOS and ain't nobody going to help you. We're going to be in a position to where we're going to look for help and our help will be vain because our help is no longer the Lord. I believe that's coming to our country. As much as I don't want to accept it, it is a reality 
because of what I'm seeing outside of my window and what I'm watching in living color and living life is matching up with the reality of the word of God. And I choose to believe God and to prepare my home. We are bewitched. We're not ready for the onslaught of persecution in this country because we have our preachers, our favorite preachers on television that are telling us everything is fine and all will be well with our soul. Well, I'll tell you this, everything will be well with my soul for my God is with me and he'll never leave me and he'll never forsake me. Whether or not they string me up to a cross or not. Let me finish it before you applaud. See, my God is good no matter if I got everything or nothing. My God is good whether I have a lot or I have a little. My God is good whether my home is taken from me or if I find out in heaven it ain't nothing but muddy old shacks. It's good enough for me because Jesus will be there. See, we got to get that mentality again. We've got to get the heart of a martyr and understand the reality. I'm not talking about dying. I'm talking about giving up everything for the cause of Christ and the cross of Christ. No matter what everything means to you. All of us will give some, but some of us will give all. And that's coming. That's coming. But the American church is not ready for this because we pick and choose our preachers like a buffet. We pick and choose our doctrines to what satisfies our soul. When the reality is the world is on fire, our nation's on fire, but we ignore it because our favorite preacher who stands up with a thousand dollar suit. By the way, you're probably looking at just about one hundred and fifty dollars right here. Shoes, belt. The guy ain't worth much in it. I'm looking at all y'all. Hmm? Standing up with multi-million dollar ministries. Got it made in the shade. Been fleecing and robbing and raping the church for years, man. And telling everybody, keep it flowing because everything's growing and everything's wonderful. And this is your best life and best days. And this is the best time to be alive. Honey, it is the best time to be alive if you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. It is the best time to be alive if you understand the prophetic pages of the headlines of tomorrow. It is the best time to be alive if you know that if you died right now, your home is in heaven forever. It is the best time now to be on God's side. But the reality is so many are on the opposite side of God and we're fighting against him daily. And God is not going to cry, uncle, we will. I'm trying to be cool in this new jacket. How am I doing? Verse 7. The whole earth is at rest in quiet. They break forth into singing. I know some of y'all are not going to believe this, but there's coming a day when the nations of the world will rejoice that we're gone. They will rejoice. There'll be some nations that will say, I'm so glad there's no more pornography being spewed out of America. I'm so glad we don't have to learn violence and murder. I'm not excluding any other nation of the world. I'm making a point that we are the pinnacle of these things. We are that nation that sits upon a hill. But if the light is no more the light of God, then it is the darkness of Satan that we produce. And that's what we do. But we have a normalcy bias mindset in America that we just don't want to receive this. But I am telling you what is going to come to America in the next few short moments of time is going to cause us all to be forced to look and say, my God, the day of reckoning is here. I'm telling you it's coming. The shadow of God is going to pass over America and it will be dark. But there will come that day when the nations will rejoice. They'll rejoice that no longer we have to deal 
with this entity Babylon. We've made our money, we've made our riches, we've made our blessings, but I'm glad that she's gone. And verse 6, it talked about the, the continual stroke. And I want to go back to that because there's certain, a specific word I want you to see there. It talks about apostasy in the Hebrew for the continual stroke. It's talking about apostasy that is, takes place because of Babylon moving in as a government, moving in as a currency that causes revolt and rebellion. Look it up. That's what it means. And that's exactly what we have done through the system of our nation. Listen, I'm telling you, I, 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 I have such a hard time when I'm at home and, I, and, I, and I, I, I'm looking at the news, I'm researching, and I know you feel the same way as I do. But I look and I say, God, where's the innocency at? I try to recollect in my mind and go back several years and, and go back further into my youth and remember when certain things were precious and certain things were innocent and I looked forward to certain times and I looked forward to certain days and certain things were very captivating to my youthful heart. But I stand here in the callous of reality and the cold drum of America burning and feasing, feasing with all types of debaucheries and, and abominations. And I look at this and I say, every institution has been defiled. It's so hard to find anything pure in America again. And it breaks my heart as I know it breaks yours and multiplied millions that listen to messages like this. If it doesn't, there's something wrong with you. If the news that you read doesn't bother you, something's wrong with you. I'm telling you, I'm just going to say it like it is. You, you're not of me and you're not with me. If these things that you hear don't bother you, that don't make you cry and don't make you weep before, before the porch and the altar and say, my God, what has happened to my country? And every pastor who stands behind a pulpit and preaches some type of other gospel, God will deal with you for not warning the folks out there. No, you're not going to point your finger at me and say, I didn't warn you. Because I warn you every time the Father tells me to warn you. No matter what it costs me, no matter what people think of me. I will preach the truth so that you could be free. Because we're bewitched in America. Just the other day, we watched it take place in the White House where President Trump lit the candle during Dilawe, the Hindu celebration of lights. Does anybody see the ceremony of D? Wally? No? Because here is the hypocrisy of the American church. Here is the hypocrisy of American politics, Christianity style. Is that your guy, the fall guy, who occupies the White House today, can get away with having a Hindu ceremony inside the Oval Office? But I haven't found one conservative Christian ministry who said a thing about it. Write me and show me if I'm wrong. I'm talking mainstream conservative Christian. And I checked every online source that I knew before I came in this service today. And I will say to you, Mr. and Mrs., you are a coward. You bypassed the whole story. Do you understand what that represents? It is lighting of a candle to foreign gods of the Hindu religion. The main one being Shiva. Now hold on now. I told you uh, people will get mad at me and I'm not trying to castigate. I'm, not, I'm just giving you facts. We stand up and say we're, in a, we're a Christian nation. We stand up and say we got a Christian guy in there. We stand up and say we have Christian this and Christian that. And we allow this to take place in the highest office of the land. 
and I don't find any Christian talking about it. Did you? I barely found any mainstream conservative political news agency to talk about this ceremony. But Obama did it. And everybody blew a gasket. Y'all better help me. I'm about to take off this $39 jacket. In fact, I'm going to do it now. Huh? Everybody, now I'm not defending. Now I want you to hear this. I want you to hear the hypocrisy. And I want you to see how bewitched we are in America. Obama walked around with a Hindu monkey god idol in his pocket. Most of you all don't know that unless you went to Ignited Church because I told you he did. And we castigated him and good reason for it. But now we got the white guy. Oh, you aren't, now I'm taking the tie off because now you really ain't listening to me. And that's as far as I'm going. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen now. No, I, I got to get your attention somehow. Because the white guy, the fall guy, the Christian guy is in office and he's doing a ceremony, Diwali, to the god, the deities, Rama, or Rama and Saita, which it all goes back to Shiva. I've been there. I've been to Kathmandu. I've been to Nepal. I've been to the most holy Hindu country in the world. I've walked over the most holiest Hindu river. I've watched them do their ceremonies. I've been to uh, the temple monkey where Buddha apparently cut all his hair and monkeys ran down it. It's got a lot to do with Hinduism because in Nepal it's intermingled. I don't have time to teach the whole thing. But there, here it is. This, this religion of over 300 million gods and we supposedly have a Christian president lighting a lamp to honor the return of these deities. That's what the whole ceremony is. It is the ceremony of lights to allow those demon powers to find their way back. Honey. And we're going to get Christian guys up, get up there and wear the whole old story out about Halloween. I got it. But we had Halloween in the White House the other day, and you ain't said ne'er a thing. Come on, church, you better help me. I'm all alone up here, and that's okay. Alone I came, alone I'll go. Is anybody here? I'm talking about going out of the world now. And I, I, I searched and I looked, and, and if I find somebody, I'll say, okay, great, thanks for being on the home team. But the main people that I know, the main people that I see, the main people that are out there, I didn't see anything about this demon worship. Hey, Dr. Dumbbell in Texas, how come you didn't rebuke your little boy? Is anybody here? Why don't we just tell it like it is? Why don't we just tell it like it is? You made us eat this whole thing, this evangelical junk sandwich, that we got to accept this because this is the will of the Lord and this is Christianity and we're going to make America great again and we're going to turn everything around. Where are you rebuking? Paula White? I'm just going to name names. You put your face out there. You put your arm around. You endorsed. I ain't picking on anybody. You move, you do a public rebuke and I'll, I'll share it around the world. Does anybody see this with me? We're bewitched. We're bewitched. And we think it's fine. We think it's wonderful. But the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's got an issue with America. And we've opened the door for demon power. And I don't care who's in that White House. It would be like me coming up here and bringing some type of idol into the church and, and embracing this idol 
and accepting it as a deity. How many of y'all would like that? Pastor Jen said, I'll knock you out of that demon idol. Well, number one, you'd never see that happen, but number two, we allow this to take place and nobody wants to say anything about it. No conservative Christian wants to say anything about it. No guy or girl running for office who's riding on the tail of this particular president, his popularity, has said a thing that I'm aware of. Yeah, I got a problem with it. I'm an equal opportunity offender. I would offend Obama as I would offend Bush as I would offend anybody else. Sin is sin. And we're bewitched in our country because we think it's okay because it's a little something on the side. And oh, a little. And if I hear it's because he's a baby Christian one more time, I will throw this microphone across the parking lot. You get baby Christian status after maybe three years. That's about it. After that, you better grow yourself up. You better go from the pens. Never mind. I'll just, I'll, I'll just, I'll just stop right there. Well, it depends, doesn't it? It's maddening. It's insanity. That we in the church go along with the Pied Pipers. We're headed into war. We're headed to the abyss. We're saying, we're looking at all these things. And we're saying, oh no, it's a Christian thing. And we're still Christian and we're still right. And we allow these things to take place in our country. And you ain't got the audacity to say anything, preacher. I told you when the Lord shared with me after the election and these people were pied piping and they were following them around, the Lord told me, he said, it's because of an agenda. Well, I don't have an agenda. I don't have a political dog in the fight. My agenda, my assignment is God. Let's call evil, evil. Mr. President, you ought to apologize to America and every single Christian who voted for you. That was ungodly. And that's being nice. Lest somebody get mad at me. What's new? Verse 7. I'm not mad, by the way. I feel good. I'm just heartbroken. I'm just heartbroken that when, when we start seeing these things take place and massive, massive destruction in our country and invasion of our enemies and the falling of our currency and all these things that are set up against us, we can look back and see these days. I'm heartbroken over it, Brother Mike. I don't want to see it. I want my children to grow up and be righteous men and women. I want them to be great citizens of the kingdom of God. I want them to be ambassadors. Is anybody here? I want mine to be different than everybody else's. To be an, an America what used to be. When a man was a man. Instead of some thug. And some woman, a woman and not a whore. Let, let, me, let me go on before I really get in trouble here. I mean, YouTube ain't giving me no money anyway, so what's the big deal? Never trusted in them anyways. Are you in Bible? Isaiah chapter 14. Watch this. I've been in the Bible the whole time. Everything I just said to you was Bible. If you'd study your Bible, you'd know it's true. You would know it's true that the pagan Babylonian leaders of the last day would worship foreign entities and would entertain them and allow them. Mm, I, I got to go. Watch this. I'll be here all day. The earth is at rest. Okay, talking about the party time. Verse 8. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. In other words, ain't nobody here to chop us down. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at the coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. 
even all the chief ones of the earth is raised up from their thrones and all the kings of the nation. Can I tell you what the Lord spoke to me about that verse? He said there's an explosion of hell coming to America. That's exactly what that verse means. That at your time of departure, there is going to be the raising of hell, if you will. Those that have gone before you, Nebuchadnezzar. Those that have gone before you, wicked rulers. An explosion of hell is coming to America. We're watching it take place. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Are thou become weak as we? Are thou become like unto us? In other words, they're going to say, welcome to hell. Been waiting on you, dude. Welcome to hell. We've been waiting on you, nation. Welcome to third world, America. Welcome to a banana republic, America. Welcome to armed conflict on your streets, America. Welcome to civil war, America. Welcome to invasion by foreign entities, America. It's coming. It's coming because we're Babylonian. Trust me, we will not get away with what we did in the Oval Office the other day. I promise you. You can call it ignorance. You can call it what you want. God calls it abomination and blasphemy. And it is proof of the character of the person. And I've said it for oh, so long. Oh, but no, no, this is, this is our day. I don't hear a lot of those people much lately. They've been tooting their horn about their fall guy. Let me go on verse 11. Thy pomp is, bar is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials and the worms, the worms are spread under thee and the worms cover thee. In other words, you're going to go from that nice outfit that you had from your lap of luxury your estee lata and whatever you put upon you that costs more than some folks' light bill, it's going to turn to worms. We don't believe it can happen in America, but it will because it happens to Babylon. Now watch this in verse 12. I want to share this with you. I'm not going to go to Deep theologically, but how thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. Now, Lucifer is extracted from various transcriptions and translations. And so there is a historical understanding that this scripture in context stays with the king of Babylon and the system of Babylon. But I'm not going to go into details other than to tell you we are still talking about this system. Now watch. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, or the uh, king of Babylon. Watch this. The son of the morning. How thou art cast down from the mount which thou didst weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Now stop right there. This is talking about Genesis chapter 11 and the rise of Babel. If you want to understand historically and scripturally, it is speaking of that Babylonian system that was developed in Genesis chapter 11 that is still alive in the world today, that is still in America today in our government and our politics, that we will rise above the stars, meaning God's people. It's not stars, lunar, heavenly. It's speaking of the people of God, and then it talks about the mount that I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit upon the mount of the congregation to the sides of the north, speaks of Mount Zion and where God and Moses met at the tent of presence. Don't have time to go into it all. But the understanding is this, is that this Babylonian system 
throughout the ages of his existence would try to develop, a, develop an economic system, a political system, and a military system that did not need God. That did not respect God or his commandments or his people. He would pay them lip service, as we're doing right now in Israel. But the ultimate goal is to secure Babylon as a world power. And that is exactly what has taken place in America. America was not always this way, as you know. But today we're watching it take place. So he says, I want to exalt myself above the plans of God. I want to do these things that causes me to be number one. So God says, I'm going to deal with you, king of Babylon. I'm going to deal with you this system of Babylonian pagan practice that tries to usurp my authority and go above my plans. And that's what's happening in our country today as we watch it fall and slide down ever so much into the abyss. And it's amazing to me as we read the headlines, I almost cannot stand it. I'm not a weak man. But my heart breaks when I read of the Babylonian pagan lifestyle that we're living in this country and how the church is so arrogant and ignorant and skipping along over the fault lines of life, acting like nothing's happening, and you turn on your television and you can't find a preacher that would weep and cry out and rend their heart instead of their garments and say, God, have mercy on us. We're a sick nation, folks. We're Babylonian in nature. Just the other day, Right in Covington, Georgia, just the other day, a young lady puts her little 15-year-old bed to baby girl to bed after feeding and changing her diaper. A few hours in the morning comes and sunrise comes and they look for the young child and they can't find the little 15-month-old beautiful little baby. But hours later, they found the baby in a duffel bag in the woods because the father killed it. Covington, Georgia. 15 month old little girl. We've lost our moral compass. We're no longer anchored to the gospel harbor of God. Not when we have a president that's opening the doors for demon powers. And a man that would kill his little 15-month-old girl. A 19-year-old boy from Texas went to visit his family in Seattle. The family asked him to watch a six-year-old nephew. Picture with me in your mind the daily events as they might have played and had fun and just hung around. Then all of a sudden... The demon power inside of this 19-year-old boy entered into him or manifested and he killed this six-year-old boy and he threw him in the dumpster. Honey, you throw trash in a dumpster. Not human life. Six years old. Where are we going, Uncle? What are we going to do, Uncle so-and-so? Boy had no idea what he'd eat for breakfast, but he's in the presence of Jesus Christ right now. Just the other day, a woman took two of her children, one year old and two years old, and put them inside of an oven. And turned it on. And killed them both. And then did a, a video phone call with her husband to show her, him what he ha she had done. Oh, I, uh, uh. America, oh, I don't want... Uh. Preacher, how can... Uh. 
this is what's happening in our country. That was Atlanta, Georgia, right down the road, y'all. We don't want to face it, but this is what's taking place in our country. And how can you say America will be great again? How can you say everything's fine? We need wholesale revival and repentance for the craziness of our country. This is insanity. I beg you, pastor, call upon the God. I had somebody write to me and say, well, how are we going to change the whole nation? I never wrote back because I don't want to make my keyboard an assault rifle. Because I surely would blow that computer up by what I'd have to say. I'm not trying to make the whole nation saved. I'm trying to win somebody. You're bewitched. To ask a stupid question like that. Who gives a rip? All I care is about people getting saved. I'm not trying to make the whole country turn. I just want somebody. Get, I want to stop a 19-year-old from killing his nephew. I want to stop some crazy lady in Atlanta for putting her children in an oven. Now, we ain't mad in America yet. No, that doesn't make us mad. When you can't get your money out of the ATM, I promise and prophesy to you, you'll give a rip. Right now, you don't care. I ain't talking about ignited. You know I know your heart. But some of y'all listen, and some of y'all, you, you'll, you'll share this with your family, and they, they eat popcorn listen to it. Well, I ain't your entertainment. I'm your warning, and you better listen. And I ain't your only warning. There's a whole lot of people like me that are out there. I love you, but I can't let this go. I love you. But I ain't going to come in here on a Sunday morning and just wax it over, baby. We're going to tell it like it is because this is what God told me to tell the church. A woman in Delaware. A woman in Delaware drowns her infant son. Then goes and grabs her five-year-old son and drowns him too. The nearest a woman can ever get to death is birth. And then you're going to kill it? Honey, we better stop worrying so much about abortion and start worrying about those we can see because we're killing what we see now. And don't you misconstrue me. You better go and fight against abortion as well and believe God to stop the Holocaust. But the point is, now we got to watch the things we see. Now we got to protect these youngins. What do you tell that baby? Come on, baby, we're going to get you a bath. Can I tell you something? That happened in the last two weeks. What I just told you was in a span of two weeks here in Babylon. And I ain't even got to the whole thing yet. We're bewitched. How do you get up on a Sunday morning? How do you go to church and have happy church and all this junk that we preach when this is happening right now? Well, pastor, I can't do nothing about it. Intercede and pray. Maybe you can stop the next thing from taking place in your neighborhood. You don't know who's, who, what they're thinking in the house across from you. You have no idea. We're bewitched. We'll be bewitched because we have the master magicians that stand up on Sunday morning and give you a potion and a spell, an enchantment, to keep you distracted from the reality of the hell flames that are around you. Infant son and a five-year-old son. The other day there were, well it's been several months now, but they just found the body of those two people that were hiking in California. Some of you might, might have seen the story and were following it. Turned out to be a murder-suicide. Where the young man killed his fiancée or girlfriend or whatever she was to him and then he killed himself. 
And when they found the bodies, they found them embracing one another. And the father had the audacity to say these things. My son was a good boy. He was a good man. Look how he loved her and embraced her. What's that? Just a nice guy. Just a guy you take home with you. Just a girl that you would take home with you. The person you met on Facebook. Oh, just a, just a picture of America. Just a picture of who we are. That's the mindset of America today. That's the mindset of us. We're bewitched and we'll look at something so grotesque and so crazy and such an abomination, the taking of a life, murder and suicide and say, well, they loved one another and he was such a benevolent man. No, we're past fixing. Do I still have at least one friend in this prison cell? Let me finish. The nation is unraveling morally. We're watching it cascade over the cliff to the abyss. The sexual sins of our country are exploding. Just read the other day, in fact it was yesterday, where a gym teacher who was retired had groped and touched, and let's call it molestation, six seventh graders. Not in a week's time, not in a month's time, in a one day period. Someone ought to teach little Sally how to kick it. Oh, I ain't joking. Somebody need to tell her how to do a little IP man action. If you don't know what that is, you need to watch that movie. Is anybody here? I need to come up with kitty, kitty pepper spray. Kitty pepper spray. That's about what you need to do today. Can't even go to Babylonian school without some freak, some retired gym teacher touching all over children. Six of them in a one day period. This is insanity, y'all. Y'all reading this every day just like I am. I ain't picking on the schools. I ain't picking on anybody. But we're reading it every single day. It is insanity that's taking place. Just the other day, a transgender woman molested a 10-year-old in the bathroom. We told you what happened in America. We told you that's what they're going to do in these bathrooms. We told you if you let the freaks out, they're going to do it. Some of y'all on overload right now. Some of y'all wondering why you came to church today. You came to church for truth. You came to church because we're not going to go to sleep. You came to church, that's, that's why we're going to build a spirit of excellence Christian academy in this area to where we can protect our children as long as the Lord tarries. We're going to do our best to have a lighthouse in the midst of this Babylonian sea. And I'll round it off with your report with a 72-year-old pastor of a Baptist church in Indiana who was caught molesting little children as young as three years old by using candy to bring them in the office. And the report I read, it's been over a 30-year period at least. Where's the discernment from the church house? You got a devil in the pulpit. Pull him out, drag him out, and put him in jail. Well, he's our pastor. He's a pedophile, and he's a predator, and he's full of the devil. Let Brother Mike minister to him down at the county jail while he's waiting for his sentencing. There'll be a day, there was a day when the elders and deacons would have strung him up. 
by his toenails just to be nice. I got to get out of here, man. Y'all making me madder by the moment. I love you. I love you. But why isn't our heart breaking? Why? I'm asking the church of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you watching me. Why isn't our heart breaking? Why don't we care? What is it going to take? It's not, it, it's only going to come when it hurts us. You ought to be praying for every child in your neighborhood when you see a school bus go by. Plead the blood of Jesus over that school bus. You pass by a schoolhouse and God expose the teachers and protect the children. Give the children a voice to say something. Question your children. I told you, if my, I would come in like SWAT. In my children's room. Everybody on the ground. You don't think so? Well, I don't want to disturb their privacy. You ain't paying for nothing. You ain't got a private room. Private air, private TV, private telephone, private game system, private, private, private. There ain't no privacy here. Joshua knows what I'm talking about. He'll be 30. He's like... Because I remember my privacy turned into demonization. When I was private, I learned how to do private things. And I became very good at it. How many of y'all can say amen, amen to yourself? Man, I perfected. I was in my lab. Came out like a choir boy. Manipulated everybody and everything I knew. Because I had privacy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You go in there and flip every single cabinet over, every single drawer over. No, you don't, you don't give me. Well, that, that's their private texting. I'm telling you what parents say. Well, I got Johnny a phone. He's five. He, he. Who are you going to call, Mickey Mouse? giving you no stinking phone at five not giving you a stinking phone at 15 i'll give you his phone when you go down and buy one no this this is crazy in america well yeah boy i tell you he's just no i want to protect and preserve mine so that i can present him before god and when i go before god he's going to say what did you do with what i gave you let, let me go that's why none of y'all going to point a finger at me. Uh-uh. I'm getting you now. So you don't stand there and say, God, it was Pastor. God's going to be like, uh-uh, watch this video. <laughs> hey, man, I'm covering myself. Can anybody say amen? I want my children to grow up the right way. No matter how much time. We have in Babylon. Oh, let me go. Verse 18 and verse 19. And all the kings of the nation, even all of them in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. And thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. What is this talking about? He's saying that the king of Babylon won't even have a funeral. I'm believing that what is coming to America, to the system, to this Babylonian system, there will be no funeral for us. There will be no pomp and circumstance and celebration. It will be good riddance to a nation that has been churned into literal hell. In verse 21, you have to see this, and I'm going to get out of your way. Prepare for 
Or prepare slaughter, prepare for slaughter of the children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. The word prepare means stand firm. I got a word for you today, stand firm. You better stand firm in this Bible. You better stand firm in your love and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Do not be bewitched by these people on television, whether they're Christian conservatives or their preachers, or with their politicians, if they don't preach, thus saith the Lord, and it line up with the reality of the word of God, do not be bewitched. Do not follow their enchantments. Verse 23 says, And I will also make it a possession for the bittern. That means hedgehog. In other words, some type of varmint. And pools of water. No, not waters that you drink, but muddy waters. And I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. I believe the broom of destruction has begun sweeping across this nation. And you're going to see an increase of the sweeping of God in the house of God. Just like this pastor in Indiana and many other pastors and leaders. We're in a very dangerous time here in this nation. And I'm praying for you and your family and for pastors who are watching me today to fall in love with the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of your sins. Make him Lord of everything. Follow the word of God and not the word of man. Father, we love you today and I pray that the church would come out of this spell, this enchantment, this witchcraft. We have been be bewitched in this country. We are cursed with a curse. But God, I do pray for those that are listening, that they would find a place of repentance. They would find a place to cry out for these young children that we would pray for our schools and pray for home schools to rise up and Christian academies to rise up in places of sanity that can only come from knowing you. Father, I pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. I'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>